tip number three, okay, is to find patterns in the mistakes that you make. And where do you gain the knowledge? Where do you find this pattern? How do you find these patterns? These are questions that you're trying to ask, right? One way that you can find it is from... You can have done tutorial questions. You guys could have done, you know, um, topical practices. And you look at the mistakes that you're making and take note of it, okay? The second way to learn is from tutorials, okay? So when I talk about tutorials, you can ask your teacher, your teacher is a human, you can ask him or her any doubt that you have or why did you make the mistake and how do you correct it forward. The tutors will tell you the common misconceptions that the general student cohort would make for each topic. I would like you guys to you know when your teacher, when your tutor says that, write it down on a piece of paper, write it down in your notebook, okay? Alright, you're asking me what did I do to find the patterns and the mistakes that I was making? The number one is topical practices and tutorials and i use post-its so what do i mean by that okay i can show you guys in right in front okay this is the notebook that i use all right this is the chemistry notebook i use to take my notes and what i did i have it right in front of you i have so many post-its on these pages right and what i did was to look back at the tutorials that i that we was went through in class and look at the mistakes that i did and after that, what I did was to take post-its and write down the mistakes, okay? Write down the mistakes that you made in the topical practices, which is outside tutorials, they give you topical practices to do. And where do you paste the post-its, okay? You can paste it on your notebook, like what I have done. You can paste it on the relevant um, um, notes that your school gives as well. Then the number two thing I did was to... CD. CDs are common tests, so all like the you know like mid-year papers, your end of year papers, or your promos. Okay, what you guys want to do as you're studying for the next exam is to look far, look back at past CDs, look at the mistakes you made, and not just that. That's where people will stop. Okay, look through, write it down on a piece of paper, and most importantly, look if you are making the same mistakes again, again, and again, like consecutive CDs. For example. You're making a mistake in chemical bonding. You're making a mistake or this you have a common misconception that carried over across different common tests. These are the topics that you should focus on. Okay? You guys can't do all topical practices. We don't have the time. We are juggling with so many subjects, right? So where do you focus your topical practices on? This. Repeating mistakes. Where in the CTs you made the mistakes again and again, carried over across different CTs. Those topics are the ones that you should do topical practices so that you can brush up on your knowledge. Right guys, the fourth strategy I can give you is to find patterns in content. What I mean by that, there is so much to study for chem. There's 20 plus chapters, okay? And there's so much micro details that you guys will have to remember. Then how do you see the macro concept? How do you how do you find a fast way to recall the knowledge? There's two ways you guys can find patterns when you're trying to remember content. Not just memorize and memorize so many micro details. One way is actually to find like The simple acronym that was taught under transition metals is this thing called LSPEC. Oh, what is LSBEC? Okay, the presence of ligands causes the splitting of the three D orbitals into orbitals of slightly different energy levels. Okay, and then you have P, which is due to the partially filled three D subshell electrons. You know, go from one energy level. Okay, so that is actually a concept that explains the color of T M complexes. All right. So this huge chunk of text you need to remember, but I just summed it under an acronym, an acronym, all right? That is one way you guys can do, all right? I'll show you the second strategy right now. Under inorganic chem, the topic of periodic table, there's one main concept, the acid-base nature of oxides. There's so many equations you need to remember, right guys? This is an equation of a reaction of a period 3 oxide with a base, in this case NaOH. And there's a lot of such equations you need to remember, not just phosphorus but also 
SO3, there's also NA2O, there's MGO. So how to remember it? The strategy that I found was first So balance the period three element. There is one phosphorus here, there's four phosphorus. So you are what are you gonna do? You're gonna put the number four right here. Then the second thing that you do is to balance. It's not really in the notes that was given by my school, but I found this like cheat code or this technique. So in this case is a react this is when the oxide reacts with an acid, which is not this case. We're talking about the base, okay? So you balance the Na plus. So there's four times three, there's 12 Na on the product side. So you put the number 12, okay? Then the third thing that you do is to balance H2O. So what do you guys do over here? There's how much oxygen? O10, so there's 10 plus 12, there's 22. And here there is four oxygens, okay? Four times four, 16. And there's one oxygen here, okay? That makes it 17. So how do you put, make 22 oxygens on both sides so it balances? You add the number 6 and that's how we balance it, right? So that's called magic codes and this applies to not only just NaOH, it applies to HCl and applies to different oxides as well under PT1 and this is an amazing technique that you guys can also try for many different other topics, not just periodic table. You can even try for transition metals and other inorganic chapters. The last and final strategy, the fifth strategy, is to find patterns in questions. For those of you guys who stick till this part of the video, you guys are probably going to score really well for chemistry, okay? Believe me, okay? So finding patterns in questions. What do I mean by that, okay? The, the Cambridge syllabus, right? Cambridge syllabus, especially for A-levels, right? Tests many, okay? But I mean many, I mean many topics in one question. And that's why you need synergy. So what I mean by that, they, they test many different topics. So for example, an energetics question can ask you about chemical bonding as well and atomic structure. Uh, maybe an organic chemistry question can ask you about chemical bonding and weird, weird like equilibrium as well. So it's important to understand the synergy between the different chapters. And it's also a concept that I did went through in the previous video about the macro mind map on chemistry. The link is both up and in the description as well. So something that I went through in the last video as well is to plan out approach to each topic, okay? So for example, you see a question on solubility equilibrium, right? And when I was studying in Apple CC, what my tutor went through, right? Is this that they can ask you two things? So in an A-level question, right, they can ask many different topics, but there will be one main topic that you're trying to ask, okay? So when I found that main topic, okay, for example, if it turns out to be solubility equilibria, I'll think of these two things. Every time I answer each part of the question, I think of these two things. When you face that topic question in an exam, you don't get scared. You don't like, you see many different topics coming in one question, you don't panic. You know and you have a focus. And that is my most important strategy, finding patterns in questions. Please try it out. Thank you guys for watching this video. These are the stra high strategies that I use to really get my high grades for chemistry. And I believe you guys have the potential to do it, all right? Stick to yourself, stick to these five strategies, try applying it one at a time. When you're studying for chemistry, I believe you guys can really do well. Share this video with all your friends who are just struggling with chemistry and really need help. Stay tuned for my next video, where I will be talking about how to answer deductive questions in organic chemistry. A lot of you guys don't know what it is. It sounds really spooky and it is.